Today I want to tell you about how I fail at drawing, and maybe even at life, all the time, and why that's okay. While I talk, I'll be drawing in one of my no Fs given sketchbooks, from imagination, like I did when I was a kid. This video will most likely fail as well, and that's okay. Thanks for joining me today. I woke up the other day, and I had a realization that I'm getting old. Those white hairs are turning into that white beard, if you know what I'm saying. And I thought, damn, Marty, no need to get out of bed today. You already failed at life. It's just come and passed you by. What makes you think you have anything worth doing today? And then suddenly it hit me. It hit me so hard. I jolted myself out of bed and I realized that I would never talk like that to anybody that I knew, no matter how dirty or rotten they were to me. So why would I ever talk like that to myself? And just as quickly as that epiphany came and went, I kid you not, I started getting mad at myself for not even realizing this sooner. I said, Artie, you moron, anyone with half a brain cell knows not to self-sabotage themselves with negative self-talk like that. And so I ended up going a level deeper, and I just stood there for a second. My mind melted into an ooze of confusion. I said, this could go on forever. So I went for a run. Running is one of those things that feels only slightly less worse than putting myself down. But by the end of the run, I felt my mind clearing and I actually felt like I accomplished something. It was still early in the morning, so I got to work. I wanted to draw, except this time, the voice in my head was this faint whisper. I could make out a positive voice merging from some other place that had been drowned out by Mr. Negativity. It said, hey Artie, film your drawings and make a video. Someone might see it and get something out of it. They can see you struggle your way through the drawing process and maybe they can see that all artists struggle and fail. So I started drawing, like really drawing, like I had no restrictions. Failure was okay and it was okay if people watched me fail over and over again, erasing the crap out of everything. I was reworking things here and there until I had these sketches, it was crazy. I had done these videos of me drawing before but they felt like a performance, like I wasn't drawing for me. I was drawing for an audience. This time, the camera disappeared. As I let my pencil struggle to articulate my ideas, I realized I had been afraid to do that for so long that I forgot that even though I'm getting older, I can still find the joy I felt in childhood when I was drawing. I wasn't thinking about doing taxes or the YouTube algorithm burying this video live. I was just drawing like, like I did when no one was watching. I got lost in the zone, the flow state, I guess. I started to recall my childhood where my art journey began. I remember when I was in second grade, my teacher, Miss Ragel the Bagel, as she was lovingly called, saw me drawing dinosaurs on a long sheet of printer paper. It was like a fever dream of prehistoric shenanigans. I would give anything to be able to see that drawing again, and I would give even more to be able to draw like that again. Anyway, my teacher encouraged me to keep drawing and supplied me with extra printer paper. She told me never to stop drawing. I want to thank you, Mrs. Ragel the Bagel. Anyway, in third grade, I met my best friend, Jerry, who also happened to be a way better artist than me. Jerry would draw these sick X-Men and Street Fighter characters. At first, I kind of tried to do the same thing, but I realized I couldn't draw them as well as Jerry could. I also started to realize maybe I wasn't as great as an artist as my teacher thought that I was. And for a time, I just stopped drawing after that. I gave up so quickly on art. I was just a kid, and maybe my friendship with Jerry would have suffered if I had been constantly competing for the non-existent Best Artist in the Class award. But anyway, in fourth grade there was an assignment where we had to illustrate a scene from this book called Island of the Blue Dolphins. At this point in time, Jerry had moved away to a whole nother country, and so I was the only so-called art kid left at school. I did the assignment and everyone was impressed by my clunky, whacked out rendition of the dolphins in the island that they crowned me art god of the school. Things went on like that for a while. I wish I could tell you I started drawing like crazy after that. But the sad truth is I became complacent and I didn't draw much till the end of fifth grade. When by chance, I met a comic book fanatic by the name of Patrick. He was a transfer student from Jersey who, like Jerry, was able to draw crazy detailed comic characters. His favorite of which was The Pit. He would draw all the detailed muscles and veins. He even created his own characters and tried making his own comic. I would stare at his drawings for days. And like I did with Jerry, I tried to do the same thing and I failed. 
So I gave up drawing for a while again until sixth grade. You see, Patrick ended up falling for a girl and he kind of stopped drawing after that. He devoted all his time to hanging out with her and all the cool kids asked him to hang out because he was the only kid with balls to ask out a girl. I, on the other hand, was so ugly that <laughs> that same year, I got picked last for square dancing. That was extreme cruelty on another level I never experienced. Eventually I got over it and I became even more infatuated with comic books. I remember perusing the magazine section every time I went to my local Kmart and flipping through a comic book magazine called Wizard. The magazine exposed me to all the big name comic book artists of the time. You see, Image Comics had overtaken Marvel in popularity and Todd McFarlane, Greg Capullo, and Jim Lee, they became my art gods. I would copy their panels and covers of Spawn and even Rob Liefeld. Yep, good old master of anatomy Rob Liefeld was someone I constantly tried to emulate. The first comic I ever bought with my own money was his first issue of Captain America, and I treasured that thing. I still look back at those years with great fondness for the simple things in life. During the sixth grade, I had a teacher that I can only refer to as the Schroeder, and she was one of the few teachers who actually taught art to some capacity. She gave every one of her students a sketchbook and did some lessons on fundamentals. My brother was a year older than me, and he was in her class the year before me, and so I got to see his drawings and assignments that she gave him. I spent that summer practicing all the drawings before the, I even started the class, so in a way I ended up becoming the best in the class again. I mean I had to be, I had no other redeeming qualities. At least that's what I thought. At this point art was officially tied to my identity. I think this is when I hit escape velocity. Drawing had become like a sport to me. I remember doing the GATE program one year, and it was a great experience. I got to hang out with other kids who were way more into art than me. And we even got to learn how to do old school photography, using like a dark room to expose film. I made a friend who introduced me to the first Warcraft game that ever came out. I remember I was flipping through one of the manuals for another game called Diablo 2. I saw some skeleton sketches by Samwise Didier and Chris Metzen that had this look that I had never seen before. That's when game art became a new area of interest. My buddy also kept a sketchbook that had all his characters, ideas, and sketches. Turns out his father was a really good illustrator, and his house had all his artwork framed. I remember seeing one of his drawings with a highly detailed leaf. I never thought something as simple as a leaf could be done in such a cool way. During middle school, I abandoned drawing almost completely and got into running. See, during PE we would do a one mile run every day, and I would always try to be the first one to finish. There was a kid named Paul who always came close to beating me. This was a healthy competition that springboarded me into youth track and cross country. I realized running was replacing my need for validation from art. Running was now tied to my identity and art took a backseat. My brother was also doing cross country at the time so I quickly realized I wanted to be the fastest runner in the school. My art sport was replaced with running and I had abandoned art altogether. I was fed a steady amount of praise out of the race course. I made it to the nationals in 8th grade and ended up getting 2nd to last in the mile and 4th in the 2 mile. I felt like a failure. I got home and I looked at my old sketchbooks and I picked up my pencil and started drawing again. High school was a wacky wild hormonal frenzy of a time. See, most of my grade school years were pre-internet. So once the World Wide Web came along, everything went into full on matrix Y2K reality discombobulation. I had a computer at home that let me see art from all over the world. I was no longer competing to be the best at my school. I was introduced to the best in the world. At some point in the internet early days, I stumbled upon a few key websites that would affect my trajectory art-wise. Conceptart.org, DeviantArt, and CG Society all had the best of the best working in the entertainment industry on full display. I was able to see how far I still had to go if I wanted to be a professional working artist. I created a DeviantArt account and scanned some artwork, and I posted it. I was able to connect with so many others who were on the same quest as me. I never felt confident enough to post on conceptart.org because they all seemed so advanced and critiqued each other's works with no holds bar and would make a professional out of you no matter what type of deal. I saw some of the most prominent artists start and break into the industry there, like Dave Raposa, Cole Eastburn, Coro, Marco Djurjevic. I was too afraid to post and fail, so I didn't. 
I decided I wanted to be a concept artist. Had I known at the time the realities of the game industry, I probably might have tried pursuing something different. I always thought if I can't work in video games, maybe I can be a tattoo artist or a fine artist. Anything with art, really. By my junior year in high school, I got into the advanced placement class after trying out the basic drawing course. My teacher told me I was not going to learn anything useful in that class, so they recommended me to Art AP. And that's where I met the teacher I will call the Gordonator. She was the kind of teacher that exposes you to all the materials and techniques you could ever need, but lets you explore art in a way that didn't feel restrictive. She also made sure we filled up as many sketchbooks as humanly possible in one year. My first ever finished sketchbook was due to this practice. The kids in the class all had different strengths and weaknesses. This is when I met another student who possessed what seemed to me like ungodly drawing ability. His name was Brady. Brady had a sketchbook that looked like a cross between manga and western comics. He drew with a pen in a way that I had never seen before. He didn't really talk much and he kept to himself, but I made friends with another student named Rob who was able to befriend him and later told me that Brady had been in an accident that caused a brain injury. It somehow gave him increased drawing abilities. I don't know if that's a true story or not, but I thought if I could draw like him, I would willingly take a brain injury any day. Rob was obsessed with animation. He was the type of guy who was obsessed with cartoons and knew since he was a kid that he wanted to be an animator. So Rob introduced me to anime and we hung out a lot, geeking out about all kinds of art stuff. He also introduced me to Photoshop. Back then, it was the biggest thing since sliced bread. He hooked me up with a totally legal copy that I paid for in full, and I spent every waking moment on trying to learn to paint in Photoshop. I mastered crucial skills like adding a lens flare to all my concepts. I tried coloring a Spawn Christmas cover once, and I found out what layers were. I thought I was going to take over the world with this thing. My senior year, the coordinator entered one of my drawings in an art competition without me even knowing about it, and it got first place. She saw something in my work that I couldn't see. After that, she forced everyone to enter the Reflections Contest, which was a statewide contest for high school students. I made this crazy pastel drawing that I was actually kind of proud of. It ended up winning first place, and I was invited over to Sacramento for an awards ceremony. Sadly, that painting was thrown away when I was moving to a new place. Anyway, the coordinator was secretly trying to build up my confidence so that I would apply to Art Center, one of the best schools for industrial design. But that's a story for another time. As I sit here and reflect on my art journey and think about how fear of failure changed the direction of my life, I now realize failure is the norm. Success is the rare stuff. Nothing happens when you're too afraid to try something. You might avoid failure in that moment, sure, but things like this channel would have never happened if I was too afraid to put myself out there. Being around artists better than me pushed and motivated me to try to be as good as they were. I hope I fail even more. That's how I learn. That's how I improve. Thank you for listening. I love you all.